I want to tell you a little bit about the way I work, and maybe it resonates with also the way how you work, because the, what you are experiencing in your university, this ontological warfare right here, women experience in a male-dominated society, black people experience in a white-dominated society, southern scholars experience in an intellectual environment, dominated by northern corporate interests. And so we have to do a little bit extra conceptual work in order to have a chance to gain our own place and space. Now, this is a concept of the self that I started to develop in 97, and I defined it in the Grace Network. It actually has two, two uh, models, this one and then this one. Now I explain how it works and why intentionality is so important. There are five parts in this model to the human being. According to the Buddha, we are 70 times seven layers of consciousness, so this is very simplistic, but I'm not claiming you know, to give you Buddhistic training. I'm just trying to give you a little bit more of a navigational map when you want to do research for social change. So when you want to do research for social change, you have to realize that as human beings, we are not just little closed off entities in a social order, and that when the order changes, woof, we are just different. No. Have you ever wondered why women sometimes defend the traditional structures that disempower them? Right? It is because as human beings, we are part of that social structure. It, it, we are living its emotions, we are dressed in it, we are embedded in it, we embody it. It is who we are. So the moment we have an emancipatory dream that is outside of our identity layer, our environment layer, when that dream is out there, at that moment a conflict happens in the self, and either you go back to where you were and say, no, I have nothing to do with it. Or you say, okay, I break open, I take whatever anxiety and upheaval comes, and I become the new expanded me. Very simple example, in the village farm uh, uh, study, the race first phase did the Uganda of the nine women that were working with a village farm to empower themselves economically, uh, five divorced and four turned down their business because it was too challenging in their culture for a woman to become economically more empowered than her man or at least to become to challenge his sense of superiority of being the main provider some of them said okay i want to save my marriage and others said okay i want to give my children an education i want to become more than i know myself to be now if my husband can't come with me, I'll go along. Simple. So this is a very simplified way of what a process of personal social change looks like. Now, because of the way I work, since 97, I've worked only with supporting people in the field doing their own thing. So I, I, I'm not doing my own anthropological field work anymore. I support people in the field who want to become what I call our native anthropologists. They want to do their own thing in their own way. They are, of course, experiencing experience this process very much so. Because even when you're in, for instance, an elite moment in uh, Sudan, like this is one of my colleagues, she was the first female veterinarian in, in Sudan. So I said, PhD from one of the Canadian universities, where she also was the first black woman at the time in that department in Canada. So we talk about a special individual. Even so, she went through this process because when she wanted to kind of contribute to a different use of ICTs in Sudan, she had to also confront the ideology of her own culture religion. But she was looking at this, the rate of uh, 
pregnancy increase uh, outside of marriage linked to the use of mobile phone. It's an example I've spoken about before because it's so clear, it's so dramatic. There's a hundred percent increase in unwanted babies uh, after mobile phone was becoming uh, popular in Sudan. And the link was clear. And there were even voices at the time, I was there in 2010, that wanted to kind of put the use of mobile phone under control. Now, of course in Sudan, unwanted baby is it's, 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 it's not like what it is in other African contexts. There it could mean the death of the woman, or at least she would be flogged, and so on. And what happened with my colleague was that she was so passionate about changing the situation that through her research, first quantitative, qualitative, then action intervention research, she became the first woman to speak publicly about sex in Sudan on a national radio show. That was an extraordinary uh, amount of courage because it's not, it's, you don't speak about sex at all in Sudan. So to speak about it on national radio uh, publicly, why she didn't get killed was because, and that is also answering your question in a way, the moment one of us start to break through and do something different than the environment dictates, your environment also changes because you're part of the environment. It goes both ways. We are not separate little individuals. So in other words, I embody the values of my time and my culture. It's in my it's in myself. It's, it's in my speech, the way how I eat, how I think, how I dream, how I make love. That's is me. Me and my culture are very inherent. But the moment I go like zzzz, here I am and I'm now speaking about sex in Sudan, even though nobody's laughing at me, zzzz, your environment also changes. So she wasn't killed, on the contrary, she got a lot of compliments, phone calls, she got a lot of fan club. So to answer your question, what if you're an environment and you're different? Well, because you're part of the environment, and if you keep on uh, nurturing your relationships, and you change your environment, also changes with you. Now, the method that I now I'm theorizing, I'm writing about, I've come to call for now transformation in connection. Because we're such cultural beings, we are not like, hey, sorry, a naked ape, and here's my culture, and there's a culture, but no. The moment you change your culture, also changes with you. So it is a transformation in connection. And if there is no connection that is changing, you can also wonder what's your transformation being really real transformation. Because if it was real transformation, you your connections with different kind of people. So that's that's what I am theoretically at the moment, what I'm writing about. That is what I want to show you. And that is why I think we are beyond the third paradigm. Because when you speak about transformation, what I now call transformation and connection, I think it's the wrong word. Because what these great researchers were doing was not transforming access to reality. She created something new. It was unheard of, it was new. But she co-created it because she couldn't have created it on her own. So instead of calling it transformation and connection, I'm now thinking about calling it co-creation. But connection is very important because we are such social cultural beings. So I think that's my hypothesis, that's why I want to, want to give you as a thought. I think when you see magic happening in your projects, it must be this kind of same dynamic. A co-creation and connection. That is so new, but because the, the one doing it is so connected that actually the whole culture changes and moves away. Because we are not solitary agents, we are social agents, cultural agents. So the moment we do something, we either get killed or the culture changes with us. Like the village from example. Divorce? Divorce? <laughs> more business? More business? 
I'm not judging the choices. I'm just saying. I either change, but when you change, everything changes with you. Or you say, no, I don't change. That's just my thoughts. And it's now five minutes we have left the scene. So any comments, any other queries, questions, yes, comments. Mm -hmm. Today is the theme of May. I was staying five years ago, I think, okay? Yeah. And then the more the young people look like the square in yeah. the center of Madrid, and the woman is coming. And from that transformation connection, from that decision that some people that did that month decided to sleep in that, in that the square in that night. And everything that what you were describing at this moment was very much what is happening in society at, uh, at the moment. Actually, five years later, all the reflections and analysis that were in newspapers were about how those specific transformations and connections have changed the Spanish society so much to the point that these people may rule the government in a month from them. So it's very much something that was so new that didn't happen, that brought so many people together. When, when yeah. Now, Look at the concepts we are using right now, right? It is transformation and connection when you look at the old. Like now we have a transformed reality. But the transformation didn't happen because those young people, one intention was to transform it. Those young people's intention was to create something new because they said, we're done with the old, we want something new. And because then from the new perspective you look back and you go, oh, it's a transformation. But it was not a transformation of intent. And that's why I think, just like that, oh, women are a minority. Oh, maybe women are not a minority. We are at a conceptual moment of transition. It's like when you embrace the, the empty concept of research intentionality, you, you wouldn't call it any more transformation and connection. You would call it co-creation and connection. But when you look, when you take away the focus on researcher or actor intentionality, and you look at the situation, you say the situation is transformed. You see what I mean? I think in this case, in many cases, I'm talking about conceptual coherence now. Sorry. See what I mean? See, see what I mean? I think because it's so political how we use our concepts. I still think that it was a transformation in death. They wanted to transform society. That's what the, the purpose of the march and the purpose of the actions. They wanted to transform the society because they didn't like the society they were living. Yes, so did they want to transform the society or did they want to create something new? transformation processes, it's always still about power. You want to transform power relationships. But these young people were not into transforming power relationships. They just wanted to, they were just saying to the whole country, we gotta stop this. This we, we are all going down the drain. Let's stop this, let's do something new. They were not finding any power relationships. The same thing with my researchers in Sudan. She was not picking a fight with the traditional Islamic leaders. She wasn't. She was just kind of said, creating something new. And my understanding is that a lot of the so-called critical emancipatory work, the third paradigm, is about transforming power relationships. But when I look at the work, especially that computer scientists do, and ICT for these specialists, you are already in the fourth paradigm. Because you want to create something new and you, do, you know that you have to co-create it. But you're not into a critique on the society for the critique, a transforming of the power relationships. But you do know, of course, that when you co-create something new, to the power relationships will change. Then you should. But, but it's not your intentionality. So this is my reflection at the moment. Yes? Now, I'm just seeing some connections now. It, it, when I speak to people in the social sciences, I'm often concerned that the notion of design yeah. doesn't come from a lot of their talk about ICT specifically. 
It's as if they treat ICT as a given, yeah. which you might change, but it's given.